Hi, my name is Jonathan Silva, and this is my second part of my little mini series on how we can translate our skills from Excel into Power BI. Now for our second video, what we're gonna focus on is using the Power Query Editor, this amazing ETL tool, to go ahead and do some data cleansing steps. We are gonna focus on an Excel workbook on one tab within that Excel workbook and how we can really clean up and transform the data within that workbook to set us up to make a very easy, very legible and easily understood pivot table and pivot chart. So we're gonna go through some of the very quick, simple processes of some basic transformations and how to get our data really set up in the best format possible in order to get our visuals ready to go. And then what we'll do is we're gonna very easily take this as we go into our next videos, take the, the work we're doing here and translate them into Power BI where we can really build out some amazing visuals. We can add in some calculated columns, some calculated measures on top of these tables to really make our report stand out and give our end user the data that we want them to have in the best and most perfect format for them. So let's go ahead and take a look at our Excel workbook here. This is the one we used in our first video and, and how we're gonna go ahead and, and take this, really make it look really awesome for us. So in this workbook, once again, we are focused on our bike manufacturing. And for this, we just have a couple different columns here within this product table. And as you can see here with these columns, it's pretty much set up in our tabular format that we're very accustomed to inside of Excel. It's really easy to enter a new data here. We just add a new row. We can go ahead and hit the drop down and add in the data however we see fit. But if we wanna make a report out of this, this isn't really gonna work for us. There are some things here that we need to do to make this just really work a lot better for us. We need to clean this up to make it a lot easier for us to go ahead and do those transformations. So let's jump into the Power Query Editor and go ahead and set ourselves up for that pivot table, pivot chart that we really wanna see as our end product here. All right, so in order to get into the Power Query Editor, we're gonna go back into our data tab here at the top and we're gonna select in our get data dropdown to navigate and launch the Power Query Editor. And when we do that, we get this pop-up window where we can then point to the workbook that we wanna have. Now, once again, you're gonna to have to point the Power Query Editor here in Excel to the location of this workbook that we wanna currently work with. You're not limited to the current one. You can use any Excel workbook or CSV file or really any other source in general that you want to use. Uh, in order to get that and check out my first video to see all the different options we have for our data sources. But in this case, we're gonna just go into our recent sources where we've already used this current workbook in order to go ahead and pull it in. So if I select recent sources here on our home tab, I can use our very first one. You'll notice I have a lot of different ones that I point to all the time. Okay, our very first one, our BI dimensions that we're currently using. And when we do that, we can choose to take whichever tab we currently want. Now you'll notice I have all of our tabs here and the actual table that was created on the current tab that we're looking at. This is the one we're gonna to wanna to take for the purpose that we wanna focus on. So I'm gonna select that one. But again, if we wanted to choose multiple different queries or tables to use at once, all we would have to do is choose this option here to select multiple items and we can choose as many of the items as we want. And again, we're just gonna choose the product table for this case, just to make it a little simple. And I'm gonna select okay. I'm gonna make this window a little bit larger there, full screen for us. And now again, we get ourselves into the Power Query Editor. And here inside the Power Query Editor is where we can do our transformations, really set up our data so we can really make these reports work perfectly for us. So for the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the columns here and we're gonna go ahead and make sure these columns are actually in the layout that we want them to be in. So if we focus on our second column here, cause our product ID, that looks okay. Actually the first thing we wanna do is let's change out our data type for product ID. Because this is an identifier, we are not going to be adding up the values within each row here within our column. We're gonna to wanna to change our data type here from a whole number into a text. We wanna make sure that Power Query Editor understands that this is an identifier column. 
We, we're going to use this as a label and not a value that we want to make you to do a summation or a max and min or anything on. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the current step that this, uh, that the power creator has done here in this change type step. So make this a text type. And then we're going to come over to our pro product column here. And inside of the product column, you'll notice we have two different options here. We essentially have segments of this product. We have our first product name, and then we have where the product lives in the segment of our, of our organization. And so to make this actually better for us, what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this column in half. We're gonna keep one half, our Abbas MA-01, and also we want all season to be a different column itself, to be our segment. All right, so I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna do a right click on our product header, and then I'm gonna come over and very easily to split this column, because we want two columns from it, I'm gonna choose split column by delimiter. Now, I've already put out some videos in the Power Query Editor in Power BI and how to, you how to split columns by delimiter being one of them. So go ahead and check out that video if you want a full understanding of all the different ways we can split columns. The Power Query Editor in Excel is the same Power Query Editor as in Power BI, so all those transformations and splittings will work both ways. I'm gonna to choose to not split by a hyphen, but I'm gonna choose the pipe stem option. It's that vertical line there that separates our product column. I'm gonna choose our leftmost delimiter and then hit okay. And what you'll notice is we're very quickly able to go ahead and split that column. The next step is let's rename these columns to really match up what, what exists in there. To rename a column, the easiest and fastest way is just double click the column header, header there. And then you can go ahead and rename it. I'm gonna call our first one here product. And then the second one here is gonna be our segment. Nice and quick, nice and easy. All right, so then let's jump into our category column. Here in our category column, you'll notice we have mix as our category label, and then we have a lot of nulls. And then we hit another category of rural, and then we have a lot of nulls. And then we continuously go through where we have a, essentially a header here followed by nulls. We know using Excel that we set that up because we'd say, okay, well, this just follows the previous. So we're just gonna put no, it's a lot faster to enter the data in. We don't have to type in mix every single time. But when we build out visuals, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that every single cell here is populated. So a very easy way to set up to make sure that mix actually fits in, because that's we know that's how it works, fits in with all of these nulls, is a transform called fill down. Now when we fill down, it'll take a value and fill every single cell inside of our column until it meets a new value and then takes the new value and does the same thing. So it really is a fast, easy to use option here to make sure that all these categories, all these cells here are filled the proper way. So in order to do that, I'm gonna again, I'm gonna live in my little right click world here, right click on the column header here, and I'm gonna navigate down to fill, and I'm gonna choose fill down. Fill up, we'll just do the opposite. And there we can fill down, and now you can see we have mix labeled in each time, we hit our new value of rural, and then it fills in as well, and then urban, and it continuously goes through, and it iterates over every single row to populate every single cell. So far, so good. I like the way that works. Then let's move into our manufacturer ID. And once again, because we're using manufacturer ID as a label, right, for our data here, what we're gonna do is, because we, we don't wanna add these up or submit, do any sum on them or anything like that. We're gonna change this to a text type. Now this is not something that you necessarily have to do. This is for my specific uh, purpose here because I know I wanna use this as a label and I don't want um, Power Query Editor or later on Power BI to think that this is a numerical type and do any type of adding or max, min, average, any type of, of type of summation or, me or metric on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that right now if for you. You can leave that. A lot of us like to hide those columns later on anyway, because we just use those in the background. But again, that is just personal preference. This last one here is our price column. Now for our price column, we have two options that we want to split through here. We have our USD, which is our currency, and then we actually we have the price there afterwards. So what we want to do is we want to replace the USD here. We want to get rid of USD because we don't necessarily need it. If we want to create a new column that has all of our currency, we can do that. If we just want to get rid of it altogether because we know we only sell inside of the United States, we can do that as well. 
And if we want to do that, we can go ahead and right click here. And again, we can choose to split the column by a delimiter, by a space, and just get rid of the, and have the USD in its own separate column, our price in another. Or what we can do is we can choose to replace values. And if we say we want to find USD space, that's going to look for every single cell. We're going to look for that one, replace it with nothing. If we hit OK, notice all of them go away. Nice and easy, nice and quick. And so now what we can very easily do is change the data type of our price to a currency because we know that's our currency. And so everything is ready to go. One of the great things, again, that lives here in the Power Query Editor is we can look at our applied steps here and we could see every single step that we've put in. So everything looks good. I think we're ready to go ahead and make our pivot table and pivot charts from this data. So what we wanna do is we're gonna navigate all the way back up to the top left here under our home tab and we're gonna to choose to close and load. Now later on in another video, I'm gonna showcase what it means to close and load too and what it, we can do inside of the data model that we can build here in Excel and using, using the Power Query Editor. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and close and load. And when we close and load, what you'll notice is we get a new option here. We get a new place here inside of our Excel file here that we can go ahead and use our query that we've built in the Power Query Editor to build items out. If you just hover over there, you can see a little bit of a preview of that query that we've used of every of all the data that we've gone ahead and, and done with. And so what if we want, we can go ahead and build out from this. So if I want to, if I come over here to insert, I can build out our pivot chart and pivot table. I'm gonna do both of them at the same time here. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna do the table arrange here, but I'm actually gonna use an external data source. Even though we're here in Excel and everything was built here, that external data source is the query we were just working with. So if I do that, I'm gonna do the connection in this workbook, the query product table that we are building. I'm gonna hit open and I'm going to put that into a new worksheet here. So I'm gonna have a new tab that showcases all the data in the exact format that we can use and build out our, our pivot table and our pivot chart. And so now for us to build a very quick and easy uh, pivot table and chart, what we're gonna do is let's just choose the columns that we wanna build out. So for the first one, let's go ahead and say, we're gonna look at our segment. We can look at our product as well. And then maybe we wanna see our segment and our product by price. And so now very easily, we could see all of the data all set up for us. I can make this a little bit larger as we can as we can showcase our data here. If I want to have all these, so we could just see at the segment level, uh, level, we can go ahead and minimize them there, and we can see all of them there as well. And so we can see all of our different segments there with our product. If the last thing I want to do is we want to make sure over here that everything is labeled property to reflect. The, the data type that we know we have. So for our sum of price, we wanna change that and go ahead and say, that's a currency, all right? We're gonna change all of these to a currency so it just makes it easier for us to understand them. All right, I'm taking the old fashioned slow way, but just to showcase where we're going over and over and over, we can do everything like that. So we now showcase that we're working with currencies here. And so we very easily built out our pivot table, our pivot chart here to, to really show all of the data here. And now we can go in and really understand everything at a more granular level to really get a better feel for our data. We can really set this up in a format that we really like to have. Things are looking good and it really makes it just that much easier for us. All right, well, thanks for bearing with me here. I love having you guys watch through these videos. Hopefully, you're really learning a lot from this. If you have, uh, if you want to learn more about this, come check out my three-hour YouTube live Learn with the Nerds event on how you can bridge your Excel skills into Power BI. And also, come in and check out our on-demand learning platform where we have courses just like this specific for you that you could really take your knowledge, leverage that existing knowledge and take it wild. Go everywhere you wanna be, really set yourself up to be that analyst, that data enthusiast, data analyst to, you know, that you wanna to have to, to better your career. 
All right, I can't wait to see you in our next video where we really showcase our data model and how we can use that to make these visuals look even better. Thanks and see you next time. Thank you.